Well, hey, Crosscar fans. We got the number five in here, and you guys are gonna love this. So we have a 100 horsepower machine, 650 pounds, and we're using ATV spindles and parts. Now, the cart can handle the weight, obviously, and the braking, for the most part, is very, very adequate. But when you're out on a track or you're hitting the off-road hard, a single pot caliper may not be enough for what you're using, and you're gonna smoke out your brakes. Now, my experience with this one, when I had it on the track and I was braking from, you know, 100 down to 60 miles an hour for a corner, uh, I did get a little brake fade on the track and it didn't scare me, it just made me reevaluate like my braking. Uh, I was easing into the brakes too much instead of just giving it a hard brake right before the corner. Uh, I strained it out and the following laps were just fine, but it was a cause to consider better braking. So that's what we're doing today. We are upgrading the brakes on our cross carts. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so we have got, we've got about a 160 millimeter rotor, which is pretty small, but think about it. We're running 10 inch wheels, which is the cross cart spec. And this is the racing cross cart. You put a caliper on there and you are getting pretty close to your rim. Single pot brake. This is the stock on a Raptor 660R. Brake pads, absolutely tiny, about an inch and a half of surface area. That's the size of your brake pad. Look how little that is. Just fine for a quad and just fine on these for the most part, like I said, but we're looking to upgrade, right? So we can't make our rotor bigger, but we can put bigger brake pads on it, which will help with heat displacement and better braking, better feel, less brake fade, and obviously they're gonna last a lot longer. Now, as far as braking force from a single pot caliper, I can lock the brakes up on this thing whenever I want on any surface. So it's not a matter of braking force, it's a matter of braking longevity. So I did a little research, I'll tell you what I found. So we'll start with the easy direct replacement two pot piston now since this is from a yamaha all you have to do is cross reference brakes get on some forums do a little research and see if there is another brake or caliper that directly fits onto your machine two pot piston you can see how big the brake pads are they are at least double the area which is going to mean double the heat dissipation has little grooves in it to help out and since YZ, YZF 450s or YZ4, whatever. Since the race quads are racing quads, this is going to be better built. The pads are gonna come in different compounds so you can kind of fine tune it that way. And here's the best part. It just bolts right on. Look at that. You put in two bolts, you move over your brake line, and you're done, that's it. But what if you're crazy? What if you're like, ah, two pot braking isn't enough for me, sport quad braking isn't enough. I'm gonna be braking like crazy. I'm gonna be going 300 miles an hour and I need reliable brakes. Well, then you can dip into the exotic market. <laughs> so like I said, since the YFZ or YZF, YFC, whatever it is, since that race quad has a race following our yamaha 660 takes all the parts from it which means the rare exotic stuff yes this is a six pot break for this cross cart oh and it looks cool it looks cool so i'm not gonna lie to you i imported these from France. These are French made. They're actually beautiful. They are CNC cut. The machining is amazing. The fitment is so nice. The hardware is slick. The, the bleeder valve, like everything is extremely nice on this caliper. I like it a lot. 
and you already know this, it was expensive. It was expensive. But I do this stuff for you guys, so although I can't give these to you, I can show you the option for your cross cart and open up your mind to what's possible with these things, right? Dude, these are so sick. <laughs> Now, as much as we want these to be plug and play, they are unfortunately not. If you just put this on and tighten the bolts, the outer pistons are going to rub, right? So you're just gonna be pulling this side in. This is a floating because it is a six pot. It pulls from both sides, it squeezes, right? Awesome for racing applications, but you have to set that gap. It came with these washers. We'll see if it's enough. So yeah, those two washers did it. I'm not getting any, any rub at all. It is offset. The rotor anyway is offset. It's kind of cheating to the left. So I don't know if that's normal or not. I know it's not rubbing. Now when replacing your brake lines, always use new copper crush washers. This came with it. Let's see if I can do this without losing any fluid. That's it, that's easy. So I'll just keep this bleeder valve open and I will monitor my brake fluid reservoir. And also when I test them out, I'm gonna get them both on. I'm gonna depress the brakes all the way and make sure there's not too much fluid drop. There is a lot of fluid in a six pot braking system. Here we are, we have two separate brake reservoirs. Uh, this one is the front brake. And lost a lot more than I hoped. All right, so on this caliper, I've done what's known as gravity bleeding. Uh, since it's on the high point of the caliper, and my reservoir is higher than the level, I can open this up and let the air escape and get replaced with fluid. And as you can see, the fluid's running out, which means we're not gonna have much to do when it comes to actually bleeding it. It's gonna be less of a mess and it makes it pretty easy. Get it nice and clean and check for leaks. So I just found the only con of these. You have to trim your dust shield to make them fit. They won't work with the dust shield. So I gotta pull this and trim it. That sucks. <laughs> but you should be changing your rotors anyway. Um, I did mic mine. This one is pretty much brand new. It's only been on here maybe six months. So I have my speed sensor run in my dust shield. So I'm gonna have to trim it. Um, the trail tech I use is pretty slick. You just replace one of your rotor bolts with a magnet bolt, and then you hook up the other side, you gap it by a little bit, and every time it comes around, it just picks up a signal. They do have the option of running two magnets in here for a tighter uh, speedo, but I don't think it needs to be that accurate. I'm really looking at the speedometer anyway. So I will just figure out how much of this I need to trim. All right, so closing thoughts on the brakes. Uh, I did get the six pot brakes on the gold ones and I went to hit the brake pedal and it blew one of the pistons. So I did get those from eBay. <laughs> you can get good stuff on eBay. 
Uh, I basically paid a lot of money for something that doesn't work. Now I'm obviously gonna tear apart the caliper and see if there's like a bad seal in it, see about replacing the seals, see about rebuilding it. So I can use them for track day next summer. Uh, so for right now I have the 450 brakes on there, the dual caliper brakes. Uh, the single pots did just fine for my driving. These are gonna do even better. Uh, the pads are gonna last a lot longer and I shouldn't get any brake fade or anything like that. I will definitely keep you guys updated on it. But the whole idea of this video is to tell you guys that there are options, right? Do a little research. Your machine has certain spindles on it. Look and see what fits that spindle. Look at your options for it. Uh, companies make a lot of things modular. So there are definitely upgrades or alternate parts that can be used pretty much anywhere on your cart, especially if you use an ATV donor that opens up everything a lot. So I hope you guys' builds are going great. Thank you guys so much for all the support. You guys are the best and I appreciate everything. There is plenty more coming on the channel. So stay tuned, stick around and enjoy the build.